what's up everybody it's George here we're back with another video now today's video is the first video of the second series of Goblin 500 videos the first series was the build series if you recall we went through step by step we built the Goblin 500 it turned out fantastic now it's time for another series the electronics setup it's time to turn our attention to getting this bird in the air and to do that we need to get the AR 7200 BX set up and tuned in now the first thing I want to tell you is I have absolutely no clue of what I'm doing but that's okay because I have the manual it seems pretty straightforward I've gone through it a couple times there's some great YouTube videos out there props to a main uh, props to horizon horizons video specific to the 300 X, but the AR7200 is the same between uh, no matter what machine you put it in so I'm sure it will help I think between all the resources I have available I'm gonna be able to get through this with no problem let's not waste any more time let's get over to the bench and start setting up some electronics okay we're ready to get on with the programming of the AR7200 BX let's take a quick look at my setup before we move on uh, the very first thing we see is I have the manual and a pen in case I need to take any notes. We have my DX8i. It's already been programmed according to the manual for the Goblin 500. Very straightforward. I have a programming cable. It's a USB interface. I'm not going to be using that since we're going to be exploring each and every one of the individual parameters. Uh, we're not going to be hooking it up to the computer. I may do another video on that later on. And finally, we have the Goblin 500 with the canopy removed so it can easily access the, uh, the radio. So let's go ahead and get the camera on the tripod and get on with the programming. Okay, so we're all ready to get on with the programming of the Spectrum AR7200BX. And the first thing is to become familiar with it and find out what the indicator lights and the dials are for. All right, first thing that we see on the left-hand side of the receiver is all of the markings where you hook up your servos, your throttle, your binding plug. Makes it real easy to uh, hook this up. The next thing that you see is the status indicator. The status indicator blinks and glows different colors depending on what the setting is for each one of the menu points. There's two sets of LEDs for the menu points. Uh, on the left side, it goes from A to G. On the right side, from H to M. Moving across, there's three potentiometers. The first potenti potentiometer is the uh, swash plate cyclic gain. The next one is the cyclic direct feed forward. And finally, the tail gain. Uh, the last thing is the setup button, and that's what you use to enter the menu. So, before we actually go in and start programming it, this actually gives some very good information when you first boot it up during the initialization cycle. Let's go ahead and boot it up and we'll look at that and we'll talk about that real quick. Okay, once it receives power, all the LEDs flash to indicate that it's received the power. And then for about three seconds, it will show you your firmware revision level. I've paused it at this screen so we can take a look at mine. And we can see that it has A and B lit up on the left, and that is three. And then I, J, K, L on the right, which is 14, which would put my revision level at 3.14. There's one more number that goes on the end of that, and you obtain that by going into the parameters menu. After you see the firmware version, LEDs H through N are going to cycle to initialize the receiver inputs. Next, LEDs A through G will cycle, and that's to calibrate the sensors. You'll see the swash plate moving a little bit while it does this. Finally, one of the LEDs will stay lit for a few more seconds to indicate what your gain is set for, with zero being A and 100% being N. So you can see that the initialization cycle does uh, actually give you some information. Why don't we go ahead and uh, get right on to programming and get into the menu. Okay, we're ready to start setting up the AR7200BX. Now the AR7200BX has two menus. The first menu is the parameters menu, and you generally use that while you're out in the field. The second menu is the setup menu, and that's what we want to get into today. To enter the setup menu, you press and hold the setup button until LED A light flashes and then turns solid. Once it turns solid, you release it, and then you're in the setup menu. So let's go ahead and do that. I press it in. You can see LED A is flashing. LED A became solid. 
I released it and now I'm in setup menu. It's indicating that I'm on the first parameter, parameter A. And parameter A is the mounting orientation. You can see that I have this mounted horizontally, but you can mount it vertically as well. If you had it mounted vertically, you would change it um, from blue to red. Right now it's indicating blue for horizontal, but if I move my rudder stick to the right, you can see that the LED changes colors to red. And red is indicating that it's in vertical mode. I'm actually in horizontal mode, so I'm going to move my stick to the left, put it back in horizontal mode, and that is the setting for parameter A. Now, I'm not going to go on with the rest of the parameters. In this video, I wanted to introduce the series. I wanted to talk a little bit about the AR7200BX. I wanted to go over the initialization sequence, show you how to get into the menus, and show you how to adjust the parameter. In future videos, we're going to be going through every single parameter, one at a time, explaining it and telling you how to set it. So look for those videos coming soon. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy flying, friends!